recording. There we go. Um, so as I said, our webinar will be recorded, and we will be posting the recording to our academic business area of the student uh, community website, um, probably later this week. Um, and uh, so if you're, you want to go back and listen to the webinar, you can uh, I'll go to uh, the business area of our academic uh, section on the, our uh, student community. Um, we hope you find the uh, the presentation tonight interesting and instructive. Uh, there's a, a few survey questions that you'll get by email. There's only a couple. It'll take you like two seconds to to fill them out. Uh, but we want your feedback to see you know if there's anything that we can do to to make it more interesting for you guys. Um, so um, before we start, I just want to make sure everybody's familiar with the. The webinar uh, control panel uh, at the top of your screen on the right hand side. Um, you can minimize this panel by clicking on the arrow button in the upper uh, left corner of the control panel. Um, you can also click on it to expand the panel back out. Um, there is also a, uh, uh, you'll have the ability to ask questions and answer questions. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, I see we already have a, a few students who have used the uh, the question uh, uh, box to uh, uh, send messages. Um, but we just want to make sure for those who are not familiar, um, why don't you give it a try and type in your name and where you're from in the question box so I can make sure that everybody's hearing me here. Um, let me just give everybody a second here to type in. And it looks like everybody can hear me. Okay, so we have we have quite a few people from all over. I see California, Texas, East Liverpool, um, Indiana, New York. Um, looks like uh, we're Miami, Minnesota, and uh, looks like we're all over the country here. West Virginia. We have somebody in the Caribbean. Um, that's where I want to be right now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so Saint Vincent. Okay, so it looks like we got a, a pretty good uh, turnout here. Um, so uh, basically, we've allowed. Uh, well, that that question screen is going to be for you to ask questions, but that's also a screen where you can answer questions that Devi will. Uh, pose throughout the uh, the webinar. This is a very interactive webinar. I'll tell you, you know, if you just want to sit and listen, you certainly can. Um, but your input is really uh, going to, uh, you know, help uh, uh, this webinar as far as you know sharing your thoughts and ideas. So feel free to use that question box. Um, we've allowed about an hour uh, for this webinar, uh, but we may go over. Um, we'll try to keep it to an hour though um, and I think let me see that's it uh, we do have a large number of students here tonight I'm going to try to make sure and I'll, what will happen is I'm going to be monitoring the questions and at a certain point Debbie's going to stop so that I can um, you know pose your questions to her because she can't see the questions that are coming in but I can so um, you know, we'll try to answer as many as we can. We only have an hour, though, and there's a lot of students here. It looks like we have about uh, uh, 70 or so so far, and I still see some people logging in. So um, I, we've got a pretty good group tonight. Um, so we'll try and answer what we can. Uh, what, what we can, we'll try to uh, email you uh, after the webinar. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's get started here. Um, today's uh, presenter is uh, Devi Vallabhanani. Um, she's earned an MBA from Harvard Business School and received her undergraduate degree from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Uh, Devi currently serves on the admissions board for Harvard Business School uh, for outreach and evaluation of candidates worldwide. Um, she has many other uh, interests, but among other things, she's the author of our Introduction to Business course for Penn Foster, and that course appears in all our uh, college-level business curriculum. So um, as I said, we have a large number of students, and uh, so we'll try to um, you know, answer any questions that you have along the way. 
Um, but at this point, I'm going to turn over the mic to Debbie and uh, let her uh, begin her presentation. So it's all yours, Debbie. Great. Thank you so much, Russell, and thank you, everyone, for taking a moment out of your day to uh, learn about uh, an industry that is probably familiar to all of you, and um, and in you know in the span of a decade has really kind of changed a lot of things uh, of how we do business, how we communicate, how we think, um, and how we socialize. So there's a lot um, of impact in terms of social media, but today we're going to focus on the. Uh, on the business side, these are companies that started, they make money, um, they have employees, and they're worldwide in their reach. And so we're going to talk about um, them as um, businesses, services, uh, and, uh, and whatnot, and really how they, um, you know, how they're going to grow, um, and, uh, and, um, uh, and the innovations behind them. So with that said, why don't we jump into the first slide. Um, and for those of you who've been on um, previous webinars, uh, our hallmark is really interactivity. Um, we want it to be a discussion. Obviously, with a lot of people on the call today, you know, feel free to type your comments in the comment box, as Russell indicated. Um, he does re review them, and so um, uh, the whole point is to share your um, experiences, your opinions, and whatnot. And I do ask a lot of questions, and we do make time for them. So, uh, and you can see I talk really fast. <laughs> uh, there's a lot to cover, and also um, I find this information. Uh, really I informative and important. Um, you know, we only pick topics that are really relevant to majority of Penn Foster students. So, um, so with that said, why don't we um, uh, start uh, right away um, on the next slide, and we'll jump right into Twitter. Um, we always focus on kind of the history of the company. So to think about it, it was started in 2006. So you know, not even 11 years old, and it's changed. Um, kind of like I said, it's it's kind of changed a lot of communication. It was founded by four people in Silicon Valley. Um, Jack Dorsey, who is one of the founders and is the current CEO, um, I thought it would be interesting to, to kind of share what the first tweet was. And um, all he said was uh, back in 2006 is just setting up my Twitter. And at that point, that was their symbol as TWTTR. Um, and they really went through the dictionary and wanted to find just the right word for um, for their concept, which was kind of short messages. And you know, it's it's it, I found this. I had I had to have a little chuckle of um, when I was reading about their history. Is that um, when they came across the word Twitter, they thought they thought it was just perfect. So the definition was a short burst of inconsequential information and chirps from birds, and that's exactly what the product was. And so it's it's interesting that it was supposed to that their intention was supposed to be inconsequential information. And so obviously there's so many jokes about oh Twitter, I'm eating my peanut butter sandwich, or um, I'm you know uh, going to be driving to work soon. Like that is the whole point of it and that was why they got started is to have short messages whether it was for updates whether it was to keep your family updated about your whereabouts or kind of um, whatnot and look where it grew in terms of from that one tweet to um, to how companies use it how uh, individuals used to communicate with companies you know a lot of companies use it for customer service um, airlines is a, a big example of um, you know people using Twitter to whether it's to complain whether it's to give feedback whether it's to give an update uh, and whatnot but um, so with all that said in those 11 years their current revenue is 2.5 billion dollars. Um, that might sign, uh, so we're going to you know delve into the the revenue side of it, um, uh, and uh, um, so just keep that number in mind. We're going to come back to the revenue side in in a few slides. So with that said, why don't we jump to the the next one? So like I said, in terms of um, uh, so from like I said from that it's you know 140 characters later. Um, you know, it's something that you, um, you know we've we've um, you know we've we've come to expect in terms of to people to use Twitter. So why don't we stop for a moment and pause and get um, and this is a time that we'd love your um, feedback and opinions and experiences. So um, tell us when you've used Twitter, why you like it, why you don't like it. Um, uh, you, you know, what is it about it that's interesting to you? Uh, and then we'll kind of jump into the, the the business side of Twitter. But just for now, why don't you share with us what you 
um, what you like about it and don't like about it. And let me share with you my experience in terms of um, all that. So I have tried so I've probably tried three times to to say, okay, you know what? I'm really going to jump into Twitter. Uh, and I would follow people and what you know and whatnot. Um, I I personally like Instagram. Um, Twitter, I just couldn't find like why I would use it for whether it's my hobbies, whether it's whatever. But at the same time, I have very close friends that live and breathe by Twitter. They share articles. They um, they like it. They're actively engaged in you know in their hobbies and their interest groups. So I think it's really personal preference of which social media platform you uh, you enjoy. Um, I used to get a lot of my news from um, Facebook. Uh, uh, and I still do. Uh, when I say used to, it's just more of um, um, uh, it's. There's a lot of other um, information in terms of updates. I like Instagram for kind of the social part of it, and I like Facebook for the news part of it. I feel like I could, you know, manage Facebook better. But Twitter, I just had a hard time kind of getting into it. But at the same time, I know people live and and uh, and die by it in terms of a lot of my friends and family members. So anyway, enough about my experience. So why don't we hear about uh, yours? So any um, uh, comments? Uh, Russell from, from yeah. our audience today. Yeah, we have a few. Um, we have a, a couple here. Uh, one uh, says uh, they, they've used it, but they feel it's not for the novice. Um, and uh, we have someone else who likes Facebook better. Um, there's quite a few never used before. Um, mm. It's uh, someone else has indicated they'd like to use it more uh, with a business purpose in mind. Um, uh, here's somebody, this is kind of the way I feel about it, never used it, don't see the point when I can post <laughs> messages on Facebook. So that's, that's that's my opinion as well. I would agree with that. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a very succinct way of kind of uh, yeah. summarizing, I think, what a lot of people are thinking. Yeah, I have another one here that it's also uh, uh, some Instagram and a short period to use Snapchat. Mm -hmm. uh, use Snapchat, but don't use Twitter because uh, don't enjoy the setup. Um, let's see here. So it looks like we have mm, this is good. some yeah. pros and cons here. I know, yeah. like uh, you know, the the teenage set. My son, he's uh, eighteen. He uses Snapchat all the time, so he mm -hmm. never used Twitter. So um, there's a couple more here about it being beneficial for business. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So. And uh, let me let me share with you kind of an, an anecdotal story. So a friend of mine has a restaurant, and they use it all the time to be able to um, communicate with customers, um, especially if customers have posted always great meal. Uh, they post specials. Um, kind of the, the menu update. So I could really see why a business would want to communicate it. Like I always find Twitter to be something like, if you had something to say, then then it's worth saying on Twitter. But, you know, what, I, I'm just a, you know, uh, a private citizen. What do I have to say? But I totally see why businesses would need that and be able to engage with their customers, especially kind of service-oriented businesses or, for that matter, even product. Like what if you're sold out uh, of something and then you want to announce, oh, uh, such and such product is back in stock. So I could totally see why businesses would want to use it, and you're absolutely right. Yeah, here's a here's another example. Um, someone who follows musicians and actors, some actually respond, which is really cool. The only thing I don't like is that you want to say more, but it only allows so many words. <laughs> um, so that's yeah. a... So there's there's quite a uh, few. Yeah, that that last there. that last comment brings up a good point. I think in the beginning when they you know when they set it up as 140 characters and it's supposed to be short, inconsequential you know messages. I think that was the whole point, and I know they're thinking about you well, should they extend it? Should they not? And you know and whatever. But I think now because of all the other platforms, that that might be, you know, a problem for growth in terms of uh, whatnot. So I think I could see how something in the beginning that was supposed to be really cool and different is now um, maybe hindering their growth. So I think we, we, we covered, it, you know, by asking your feedback actually encompassed a lot of the other um, items in terms of competitive advantages, competitors, 
um, you know, what can Twitter improve? What can Twitter innovate? I think this is, you know, that last comment of the short um, message. Yeah, they can totally innovate on that and provide more space. Um, but then, you know, maybe that'll lead to even more problems because then why would you even use it? Because the whole point is short and sweet messages. Right. Um, um, so it, I think that's why this is an interesting case study because what do they do now? They're you know, they're making two two and a half billion dollars, which is you know still a lot of money. But then wh where are they going to go? They've been trying to sell themselves for the last year or two, and no one no one's buying them. Um, that's really where we are today. Is who's going to buy Twitter? Uh, and there's been a lot of rumors of you know maybe Facebook, maybe Salesforce.com, maybe uh, like um, uh, uh, maybe somebody like um, Disney. Um, but then you know still nobody's kind of stepped up to the plate to buy them. So it'll be really interesting to watch, and that's part of the reason that I wanted to have um, a discussion about it because it's something to put in your minds to think about that when they when and if they actually sell themselves and we'll hear about it in the news then you'll see why it's taken so long for them to sell themselves so why don't we move on to the um, to the next slide okay but these are great comments um, this is exactly the type that uh, uh, you should be sharing so thank you hmm. so uh, so this brings us to a lot of things that um, you guys have already kind of touched upon and why don't we spend a little bit of time more so you can see then this the, the, this slide has a lot of information on it so you can see from 2010 to 2016 so obviously as of 2010 Twitter and Facebook had already been started but look in terms of I um, platforms that have been started afterwards have grown faster like WhatsApp uh, WeChat, Instagram. Instagram started a little bit out, you know, between 2012, 2013, in between there, and it has more uh, higher number of users than Twitter. Um, Facebook's obviously the giant um, in terms of both growth and potential, and, and as somebody already alluded to, ease of use, and it's that one central place to get everything. Um, and so it just right here you can see the difference in terms of um, you know what like what options does Twitter really have in terms of the future um, and it, it was only recently that you can share pictures it was only recently that um, uh, that you know you can include video and whatnot and I think it's because of Instagram Instagram probably pressured them um, not directly but saying like oh my god so many more people are going to Instagram we need these features now too so you can see where innovation has really kind of made uh, Twitter probably wake up and say, oh my god, we need those things, otherwise, you know, wh what's the point of us? So, um, um, so yeah, so that's the other thing. I mean, in terms of WhatsApp, it, that's, that is really beating a lot of these other um, uh, platforms in terms of to be able to chat. Uh, and I guess, uh, how many, well, uh, why don't we pause here. How many people use WhatsApp? And, and if you do, uh, what do you like about it, and um, and uh, and how do you use it? Okay, I'm giving him a moment to yep to type here. A um, couple have never used it. Um, let me see here. I'm not getting as big a response from this. Uh, no this problem. One here. Uh, so oh, why don't well, I, so I'll I share will, with you how. Well, Hold yep. on a moment. <laughs> Just as I <laughs> so, said that, it, it, the screen well, while, while exploded you're, while, here. <laughs> <laughs> while you're reviewing the comments, I'll, I'll share with you how I use it. So I use WhatsApp for, as I obviously you can use text, but I use it for um, uh, friends. With, friends, where it's like I have. Like I don't see them often, but I really text a lot, and I feel like it's so much easier to chat with them on WeChat um, as instead of regular text. Um, and then you can call people for free. You can. Um, I feel like it's it's much more integrated in terms of communication. You can set up little groups. Uh, so you have if you have a group of friends, it's easier to obviously you can do that with a text. But I I, I find it more um, contained. Uh, and I like some of the features and functionality. Okay. Um, so I've got a whole bunch of comments. Looks like they're still coming in here, but sure. um, there's quite a few people that have never used of it. Used it. Some have heard of it. Um, some other comments are like, it's a Facebook cousin. Um, they like the video chat. They chat with uh, family members and friends overseas. 
Um, they like the personal chat room, um, text between friends in Mexico. Um, let me see. We have a family group. Um, mm -hmm. Um, let's see, easy to communicate, whether uh, voicemail, video, chat, it's all inclusive. Um, somebody really likes your chart, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's free is another one. Uh, yeah. yeah, friendly video group chats and calling feature. Um, Good. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. This is awesome. It's this is encrypted. exactly yeah, yep. so, so it's a uh, good use for international uh, type communication. That's right. Yep, and so look at these comments. If we look, if we just, you know, listen to ourselves, look at look how vibrant and, um, and, and really strong these comments are about WhatsApp. And then earlier in terms of Twitter, like what's the point? Um, you know, I don't know why I would use it. I can understand why business. Hello. Are you um, there? No. You, yeah, you, you, uh, yeah. You broke up for a second there, Chevy. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me um, let me repeat that. Um, uh, so just based on our comments alone, you can see the difference in terms of how people are responding to both platforms, right? In terms of the comments about uh, WhatsApp are really strong. They're uh, people have an emotional connection. They're like they're they use it for a lot of different reasons. Whereas for um, Twitter, people are still struggling. Like, why would I use this? How would I use this? I could see it, why it's for business, but I don't know what it's for me. And so I think be that is played out in these numbers. And so your experience is exactly kind of what's going on on a much um, on a much bigger kind of international global level of uh, of the differences. And so this is this is right. Um, this is uh, very reflective of what's going on in the marketplace. So, uh, so yeah, you guys are spot on in terms of um, uh, of what's going on. So um, then, uh, as we continue this, why don't we jump to the next slide? So I think in terms of you will see then um, uh, uh, other other habits. So one of the things that a lot of these social media companies measure is reciprocity. And so what that means is, you know, percentage of people who use one site who and who use another site. And and I think this is reflective of the fact that a lot of people, one, one social media platform doesn't satisfy everything. Um, and some people like to, you know, kind of uh, go back and forth between two, three, maybe four, maybe even all of them. It depends on your time. It depends on your need. Um, and uh, and and whatnot. So it's uh, so some of the highlights here. So let me take a moment to kind of respond. So if you look at the people, so let's look at the um, the left hand um, column, the, the the first one, percent of Twitter users who, and if you go all the way, uh, kind of to the right, look how, look at the overlap. So the number of people who um, who use uh, Twitter who also use Facebook. So Facebook um, enjoys the highest amount. It, it is the king of all um, kind of social media sites. So it's, it's like you, everyone uses Facebook and then something else. Um, versus, but it's not it's not that way. So I think in terms of whoever is going to build, um, you know, the next big thing, or even if you're you know working at Twitter, those people have to be sitting in meetings and and say, well, you know, why why should someone use Twitter when they have all these other choices for communication, and um, uh, and you can see in terms of uh, then kind of the, the flip side. So Twitter is uh, sorry. Facebook vertically, like in terms of the, the column, use Facebook, that has the highest number of scores. So who has the lowest number of scores? Uh, it's, it, it is really, um, you know, the, the column that says use Twitter, right, in terms of Pinterest and Twitter. Um, you know, it's in the 30s and 40s and uh, all that. And then on the bottom, um, as somebody said, well, I can, you know, I think in one of the earlier comments of if I have Facebook, well, why do I need something else? Well, that that's exactly what this measures, right? On the, the last row here, percentage of Facebook users who, where it's like it says 29%, 39%, 36, and 33. So if you're using Facebook, you're less likely, uh, and the more you use Facebook, the less likely you're going to use the others. So it is. It, so all these other um, 
um, uh, platforms have to really kind of wake up every day. The you know the CEO and the leaders of these other social media companies they have to wake up every day and say, how can we be different? What value do we provide? Why would someone take the time to use us versus Facebook? And that those are some important questions that, yes, that's important to Twitter to wake up to, but I think it's important in any industry when there's a leader in that industry and when, um, you know, maybe you're working for the, the second biggest company in that industry, the third biggest company in that industry. These are questions that we all have to ask depending on kind of um, where we are in the in, in our industry or in our in our neighborhood, in our local markets. You know, the leader is going to be the leader. Right? They have scale. They have size. They're the, uh, they're they're the leader. F uh, and then so, but it, it's it. Ha but all the people who work for the the number two or the number three, these are the questions that you have to wake up and ask and answer for yourself every day if you still want to stay in business. And um uh, and your comments uh, are indicative of this, right? You guys said it up front of who. You know, if you have Facebook, why would you use anything else? Well, you're that you're part of that 90% <laughs> in terms of you're using it for so many things, um, and it's no wonder um, that uh, you know Pinterest. Um, you know, let's m spend a moment on Pinterest. They've been wanting to go public for so long, but they haven't um, because it's really hard to grow. Uh, they're doing fine. They have growth and everything, but they're you know, and they have a different proposition. So. Either you have to be really different, or you have to, you know, have a a, a much uh, better mousetrap, so to say. LinkedIn. Let's take a moment and talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn had to sell itself to Microsoft. They were about the same, similar revenue size as Twitter, but they sold themselves to Microsoft because it's the same thing. They're going to max out, and they have a very specific niche, which is um, kind of careers, resume on the business side, like um, you know, finding jobs. That's their niche. And so, but that's a solid niche. But even with that solid niche, they couldn't keep growing, and um, and, and they uh, they had to kind of keep um, they had to max out, or they were probably hitting maximum. Um, they probably hit their you know targets, uh, and so it's like, well, where else do we go from here? And so that's that's part of the reason um, uh, uh, for them. So then, um, uh, why don't we take a, a quick pause here and see if there are any questions or comments that have come in, and then we'll move on to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have some comments here, uh, okay. just just some general things. Uh, that mm -hmm. There's uh, one here using uh, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram as her main uh, 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 platforms. Um, a lot uh, say they, they use Facebook. I have... Uh, uh, one here that says, why do I need to use anything else? It's all on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. Uh, Facebook is good because uh, you have the same friends and comment and interact on the same things on country issues. It's uh, in your circle. Twitter is people responding from around the work, the work they uh, the work they do, uh, um, your your circle, uh, but you have similar interests. Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that didn't come out the way they meant. Um, you know, I, I personally myself, you know, I I, I kind of think that it's a generational type thing. You know, Facebook was one of the the first really um, to penetrate the social market, social uh, uh, yeah, social market and. Or social mm -hmm. media market, and you know now I see in my own son, you know, going to Snapchat and things like that. So there's some comments in here as well, where uh, somebody said Snapchat uh, is the you know the next leader. Um, so uh, you know, and there's some other comments, that, you know, like LinkedIn is for professionals. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, there's actually someone, uh, MySpace was the first, um, which they're right. Yeah, you're uh, absolutely right. MySpace was the first, and yeah. uh, and that was kind of well before even Facebook uh, right. kind of um, hit their stride. So, yeah, these are these are exactly the right, um, you know, uh, kind of like the, the user feedback. So it's I'm glad somebody brought up Snapchat. Um, because as we let's move to the next slide, okay. and we're going to compare um, three of uh, the uh, 
um, uh, the th you know some of the th three of the um, social media companies and take a look at their difference in size <laughs> and profitability uh, and just kind of overall usage. So um, um, so uh, so Snapchat is actually going public soon. So let's actually start with Snapchat. Um, they are they just filed to go public I think in the last couple of weeks so that's part of the reason that I you know wanted to have this discussion today because it's very timely so when you hear that in the news you'll say oh yeah we talked about it in our webinar so right now as of today they make about 400 million dollars in revenue so uh, you know so it's a good good starting point in terms of to go public but for look at their profitability they lost 500 million last year so, but at the same time, you know, you can argue, well, they're still investing, they're ramping up, and uh, and they'll they'll grow. Um, uh, so, and they have eighteen about eighteen hundred employees, and they have um, one hundred and fifty eight million daily users around the world. So that's daily. So we keep that in mind, and then we'll go and walk through Facebook. Actually, no, after Snap, let's go to Twitter because it's the next kind of bigger in size. So as we said, their revenue is about $2.5 billion. And so even with that much money, they have lost just as much about at Snapchat. So you can say in terms of, um, you know, that's still, that's not good, right? Like in terms of at this point, they should be making money. Um, uh, so something's not right here. Uh, especially if it's about advertising and uh, and all that, so they lost about you know a, a, a little a, a less than five hundred million dollars off of two and a half billion. They have close to four thousand employees, and they don't release Twitter doesn't release um, daily users, but they have three hundred million monthly users. So you know already you can see Snapchat is um, uh, beating them right in terms of from a day day to month kind of comparison. So. Uh, but then, you know, as we said, Facebook, the king of all social media, <laughs> if we thought two and a half billion was a lot of money, tw Facebook is making $28 billion in revenue. Um, and, and they're extremely profitable, $10 billion in profits. So that's a pr no wonder Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg is, um, uh, I was just reading in the, uh, in the paper, he's one of the top six wealthiest people in the world. Um, uh, and that this is exa it's a well managed company. Uh, they, it's you know they they've garnered the revenue. Your comments alone show how sticky the service is. You, they have made it so it is your one stop shop for news communication and news not just from newspapers or or whatever. News from your friends, news from your family, news from your hobbies, news from your interests and uh, and all that. So it's your one stop shop to kind of get communication. And because of that, that's the, you know, everything is about scale. They've achieved scale faster than anybody else. Um, and so just look at the difference in monthly users. If we said, you know, since we said Twitter has 300 million monthly users, you know, Facebook's, Facebook has six times that on a monthly basis, a hundred, you know, 1.8 billion people use it monthly. Um, and so, you know, why, it goes back to, so then why, um, uh, why is it that Facebook kind of um, uh, said, well, we need to be that, that, uh, that one-stop shop? So if we think about it, so let's, let's pause there for a second and let me ask you kind of, let's, let's talk about two separate but related questions. What other companies does Twitter own? Well, I'll, I'll, uh, you don't have to type in anything. I'll tell you, nothing. They only own Twitter. But as somebody alluded to WhatsApp as the cousin of Facebook, well, let's take that further. What companies does Facebook own? Any guesses? Um, nothing yet. Uh, WhatsApp? Periscope? Yep. Yep. In what, that's exactly right. Yep. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. How's that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a. <laughs> Uh, someone said Google, which uh, I know that's not correct, <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, everybody. <laughs> nice <else> try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Facebook owns WhatsApp. Per uh, no, actually, Twitter owns Periscope. I think. Um, yeah. yeah, somebody just uh, said that too. Yeah, yeah. So, but but Periscope isn't kind of the, a separate. I think it's a technology versus like uh, Facebook owns Oculus or something. Um, 
but so that's a technology. I'm talking about like full fledged like uh, full fledged company like Facebook paid uh, I don't know how many billions to WhatsApp, but they paid a billion for Instagram. Um, uh, uh, it was already kind of their own separate entity that they've um, kind of merged into it. So. Uh, so with that said, they know that um, by establishing Facebook as the um, central hub, central starting point for anything else, that's how they're able to get the $27 billion in, um, in revenue. So and if, if someone is, um, you know, wants to start the next social media platform, well, I suggest you start it in a way that's like, okay, well, how does it fit into Facebook? Because you know what, who's going to be your number one potential buyer? Probably Facebook. Facebook wanted to buy Snapchat uh, and Snap, uh, for $3 billion and Snap said, uh, Snap said no. Um, and so it's the same thing. They've been trying to buy all these other um, kind of related, separate but related uh, companies. So it's the... Um, uh, you know, it's it, it pays to be to keep to keep that number one position, and to, uh, it, uh, and that's why in the beginning they just grew grew so fast, and um, and maybe Twitter should have sold themselves to Facebook a long time ago if they had the chance. I don't know if they did, but uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if if they did. So that's the thing in terms of it. And it's really hard for them to go it alone at this point. So. Um, We'll, we'll pause here and um, see if there are any comments or questions that have come up, and then um, we'll move on. Um, yeah, just a, a few, basically, you know, about Facebook. Um, and uh, there's a question here um, about Vine, and uh, mm -hmm. what, what do you believe was the downfall of Vine? Um, I, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know if you are. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, and that's about it right now. I don't have any others at the moment, but I'm sure there will probably pop a few in here. Sure. Well, why don't I answer that one, and then okay. uh, and then if there are other others that come in, we can talk about that. So sure. I think Vine was probably a really good addition. However, it goes back to, you know, it's like saying, uh, you know, there's a restaurant that's always really popular, and then a restaurant that's not so popular. And then the restaurant that's not so popular has an amazing dish, but you just never think about going there because it's not a popular place to go. It's kind of like that in terms of if Twitter is struggling for people to use it, I think Vine was a really good addition. They just don't have enough people using it. Um, so I don't think it's an issue of Vine. I think it's a, you know it's probably good technology and whatever. And Vine, for those of you who don't know it, it's um, kind of a, a video uh, a video platform that you can integrate into uh, Twitter. I think it's what nine sec. It's either four seconds or nine second videos. But at the same time, Instagram has videos. Facebook has video. So in the beginning, why, you know, why do you need a separate video platform and pay for it when you know, all these other places have videos too? So that's the thing. I, I don't know how much they paid for Vine. I hope they didn't pay a lot because uh, it's, you know, it's, not, not, it's nothing um, that revolutionary in terms of technology. All these other platforms have video as well. Uh, I've got another one here. Um, what are the pros of for using one social media uh, platform? I believe they're saying for a business. Yeah, I think it depends on where your customers are. In terms of, let's say you are um, an accounting firm, um, that you may be better uh, being on LinkedIn because your customers are professionals. So I think it's probably something where your customers are, and that's probably where you should be going to. And but thinking about, is, are you using social media for your customers? Are you using them? kind of to be a leader in your industry, are you using them, uh, whatnot. If you're a restaurant, like we talked about as an example, well, I would say, you know, you could probably be on um, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and LinkedIn, right? Like in terms of LinkedIn, you can use it for recruiting. Facebook, you can, you know, maybe have a, uh, show a picture of um, kind of the, the special tonight uh, and any events that you have. Um, you know, Snapchat, it depends on your audience. If you have a lot of younger, younger folks who are using that, that's, I think, through marketing and through you know talking to your customers, you can figure out where your customers are and which social media platform they use a lot, and so to be able to make it worthwhile, right? What you don't want is then you know to be on Snap when all your customers are using Twitter, let's say for example. So I think in terms of it to be able to match it to where your customers are, number one. But you know as part of that is like, well, what do you want to say on it, and um, uh, and what are you going to use it for? So I think it's it's part of that. Uh, 
uh, research of figuring out what are you going to use it for and who, who is going to listen. Um, I, I got another one here if you just a more of a okay. statement than anything uh, someone who was in the food business they uh, had a Facebook page and Twitter and subscribed to SMS all the time uh, didn't need to sign on to each social media platform so I'm not sure what SMS oh, okay. is uh, uh, sure um, it's a message like texting like a, a messaging service right oh okay uh, uh, I think it means short messaging service okay. or uh, something like that. Like it's um, um, yeah. I think it's a matter of however you. Um, uh, uh, I think there was a time when you can kind of text messages to go into your Facebook. I don't know if they still have it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there are so many ways to integrate your device with all these um, networks, so that way you can do one thing and right. post at multiple places at once. So yeah. Uh, and that's the thing, it's in their best interest to make it easy for you, right? Because I think part of the reason that all these platforms have been so successful is they're not techie. They've really um, designed it for the non-techie consumer. Um, you know, we're not programmers, uh, and you know, maybe some of you are, but the majority of their, their users, you know, probably have never coded in their life. So they have to make it so um, easy and so simple um, that anyone can push a few buttons to do what they want to do. Yeah, here's one other question too. What's a what's the best social media platform to use uh, if you're a student? If you're a student, um, well, I would say you know all uh, all students, uh, especially as you are looking for jobs and uh, whatnot, uh, you should be on LinkedIn because that you can put your um, uh, your profile, where you know what you're studying, what you want to do, um, uh, and then that way you know have a resume there. Maybe if you've worked at other places, you can have recommendations from your old bosses, um, and so that way it's your one kind of your think of it as like a, a virtual resume, a, a virtual business card. So I think for students, um, LinkedIn is is definitely number one. But uh, as as part of that, maybe we should pause here and and say if you're a student looking for a job. Um, you know, and uh, and if you have your personal kind of um, social media accounts on Twitter, or Facebook, or Snapchat, or even Instagram, clean them up. A lot of yep. a lot of companies will want to see. Um, uh, they may want to see them. I, I don't yeah. know, uh, but or at least say, oh, you know, oh, or check you out at least. Um, so it's one thing to say, oh, it's my private life and everything, but nowadays a lot of companies may want to see what you're posting. Um, uh, and uh, because it, you know, they 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 want to, if it's documented, people will see it somehow. Yeah, and I agree with that definitely. Uh, I mean, I know employers that that will look at somebody's LinkedIn account, their Facebook, things like that. So it's important that you know you have a, a professional presentation, and you know you you um, uh, don't want anything on there that's going to you know be negative toward uh, uh, you know a hiring situation yeah so uh, I, I know some of my friends who have companies they will even if they're private uh, like you know their private accounts they will say well I want to see it um, because you know I, and, and and when you put yourself in their shoes well you want to see that too right if you're hiring somebody and taking a chance on them you want to know what this person is about so it's better to not post it's better to clean it up like like you know it's like getting your house in order right before you want to sell it you're trying to sell yourself so get you know get your kind of your digital footprint in order um, uh, and you know let's see if we have more time at the end to talk more about that but let's kind of go back and make sure we cover the things we want to cover today yeah. in the interest of time yeah, so then just, let's sorry. move on to the uh, the next slide yeah, just one final comment. We do have somebody here who oh, does, sure. does check Facebook uh, when they're hiring, and um, you know they don't necessarily ask permission either. They'll just go out and do a search and, and see if they can find uh, the person. Mm -hmm. so, so that does happen. Yep. Good. Good. That's a good comment. Okay. So in terms of um, uh, the uh, <laughs> as we were talking about in terms of you know. Uh, the revenue, all that, so you can just see the uh, how the how the stock market and therefore kind of the, the the overall um, uh, industry or you know the overall finance industry is looking at Twitter, 
right, in terms of if they had a much higher stock price, well, then that means people are expecting b bigger things from them. But look, it's just been a downward, yeah, they've had some, you know, bumps up uh, here and there, but overall from 2013, which is when they went public, till now, it's just been kind of a steady, uh, steady downgrade. So, you know, number one, should they have gone public? Eh, maybe. Um, uh, but they really went, they, I think they went public too early before they really figured out how they were going to make money. Um, and that's a good lesson for Snapchat now. But, uh, but overall, even if, you know, even if we say, okay, you know what, they, they had a lot of potential, well, they didn't figure it out in terms of they've had, what, three or four CEOs since 2013. The current CEO, Jack Dorsey, is the CEO of another company. Um, and so, uh, I mean, there's just a lot of, uh, it's like, well, what's going on here? Like, what's the focus? So they've been trying to sell themselves for the last um, couple of years, and you can see then just their stock price uh, for all of 2016. It's like, it's you know, they the market knows that they were selling themselves, so why are they going to price it high? Um, and so it's it's the... Um, uh, it's 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 kind of a one of those cautionary tales of a lot. There are a lot of high expectations, and for whatever reason, the company just didn't deliver. Um, and it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. So yeah, I mean, in terms of would you invest in Twitter now? Yeah, you can, but you don't know who's going to buy them and um, and where this is going to go. So if you're a risk taker, I would say yeah, go invest. I'm you know. When I say that, please don't go invest. <laughs> but I, I say that as yeah, if you think you you know can see where they're gonna their technology can be used in different ways, it may be worth investing. But otherwise, it's I I, I find it hard to see the future for Twitter um, in terms of how a company is going to uh, integrate this technology into their offering. Um, and yeah, I just I, I I it's it's one of those things of uh, they. I, I wish they had more kind of tools in their toolkit when they went public. Otherwise, it's yeah, these are not charts that uh, I feel good about when you look at a company. Um, yeah, just as a sidelight, and somebody mentioned this here. I've seen this a couple times, where uh, you know people uh, on Twitter that seem to have a lot of fights on Twitter back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, stars, mm -hmm. politicians, etc. Um, and I find it interesting that that. The, the current price of Twitter kind of started to drop in, in 2015 and into 2016. Um, so, you know, within a, the election year and what, what happened during that, you know, I think that's what they're trying to get across here. So I kind of find it interesting that the price is down in the, in the last year or so. It might be interesting to see what happens uh, in the next six months or, or uh, You're right. year. Yeah, that's exactly right. There, I think a lot of eyes will be watching, both from a business perspective as well as a consumer perspective. Of yeah, there's they haven't. That, that's the thing in terms of even with all this, you know, this is public information. Management sees their stock price every day. Well, why aren't they doing anything about it? Why aren't they like investing in tools, investing in you know whatever? Um, you know, they should be able to say, well, you know, let's come up with maybe new features, new functionality, new whatever, new tools for companies. Right? We said early on um, the beginning of our conversation say that Twitter could be really good for business. Well, what are the tools for business, right? LinkedIn has really developed a lot of tools for business. Recruiting, company profiles, there's, there's so many different things that they've done. Now they have an education section and skills. Uh, so that's what I mean by listen to your customers. What, what is Twitter doing? Um, and that's, that's, a, that's why I say like, you know, it's, that's their job is to understand what their customers need. And it's, um, yes, it's that. And so barring that, yeah, then it, it, they're not giving kind of their users any tools either. So anyway, we can go on and on about the, the state of the actual Twitter usage, but um, let's, let's move on in terms of to start wrapping up our discussion today. Um, and then we can, uh, and if there's a few minutes at the end, we can take any other questions. So we talked a lot, of, you know, without knowing it, we actually talked and included um, and incorporated a lot of topics that we've learned in, um, in the actual uh, Penn Foster Intro to Business course. So such as like innovation, look at the innovation that this is a whole industry that didn't even exist 15 years ago, right? Twitter, we said, launched in 
2006. So market valuation, look at the difference in, um, you know, in how the market is viewing Twitter and, uh, uh, and all the other companies. Leadership, yeah, I, I do think there is probably a lack of leadership at Twitter. It may have been good technology or interesting technology when they started, but where's the real leadership and to develop it uh, further after it went public? Um, technology, yes, this whole you know, social media is built on technology. Uh, competition, look at what Facebook's doing to competition. They're buying it up, and that's why you know the the kind of the the, the most universal comment is, well, Facebook is the place I go to, and the data um, you know backs that up. Competitive advantage. Well, Facebook knew that, uh, and that's why you know, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised at whatever next social media platform somebody creates. You know, Facebook would will want to you know will try to buy it. Uh, global sales glo growth strategy. You know, we can see what Facebook's growth strategy is. We can't see what Twitter's growth strategy is, and that's why and it's, that's reflective in their in their stock price. And so, uh, so why don't we move to the next slide and and um, and use this time to reflect, and then also to kind of get your um, input as to what did you learn about uh, on Twitter today, how has your opinion changed, um, and <laughs> probably most importantly, what advice would you give um, um, uh, give to Twitter executives? And if there's anything else you want to talk about, Leslie, we can use this as the kind of the catch-all. Um, uh, you know, f uh, format for your comments. Yeah, well, while we're waiting, uh, uh, they're starting to come in, but uh, mm -hmm. there was a question earlier uh, about updating profiles online, and the question was basically how often should you update your profile online, like say, for instance, in a LinkedIn or something like that. Oh, sure. I, I would say you should update it when there's something to update, like uh, you got a promotion, there's a new project at work you want to put in. Um, maybe you're, uh, like if you're a student, maybe at, at the next semester so you can include um, the classes you're taking. So when there's news, I would update. I'm not a big poster of, oh, here's an article, but obviously that's me. Um, if there's something that you find interesting and you want to keep it in your kind of feed, then then post them. There's nothing wrong with posting articles or all that, but I, I kind of use um, uh, face um, LinkedIn more just as, as like I view it. I, I view it as like a, it's like a virtual business card or your virtual resume. So feel free to post it when there's something to post, especially kind of as a student. And then, um, uh, and then, you know, I, you know, when there's, like I said, when there's something, uh, an update. If you're working on kind of a year-long project, well, you don't need to post it. You know, you don't need to update everything kind of all the time. But if you just got a promotion, if there's something kind of big that you think that um, somebody would uh, find it valuable, then I would definitely post that up up, up there. Okay, so we have some uh, comments now. Um, there's several. Um, that basically they should sell to Facebook as fast as they can. Um, <laughs> uh, we have others. That's a good one. We have. Uh, well, I kind of embellished that a little bit, but uh, yeah. I think that was the general feeling. Um, there's uh, another one here that, that she wasn't familiar with uh, Twitter, but she sort of start using it for her daycare. Um, okay. Never use Twitter. I use Facebook. Mainly some Instagram for a short period, Snapchat. Um, let's see. It seems like a lot of them have tried more than one uh, th than one uh, uh, platform. Um, let's see. Uh, Twitter only. Try, let's see. Yeah, they're they're all kind of kind of similar. Um, a lot of them have never used Twitter, um, but you know, learning more about it, um, they they would uh, uh, try it um, for their business. There's others that feel that um, it doesn't work well for business. Um, and uh, boy, oh boy, a lot of them came in here. <laughs> I can't read through <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it's okay. Um, no, I, I but, think in but, terms of it's um, as you're reading through them, it's um, 
you know, try it out, um, absolutely, because so, uh, like I said, as a good business person, you're studying business and all that, you should try it out. Like, see if you like it, see if you don't. There's, you know, that's the only way you'll know kind of if it's right for you. So it may be worth it. it you, you, you know, I would even say if you're in an industry, uh, go check out the companies in your industry, how they're using Twitter. Are they using it more to communicate to customers? Are they uh, using it to, you know, provide updates and news? Are they using it for customer service? So check it out in terms of, I think that might be good research for you, um, especially if you're preparing for an interview. I would definitely, um, you know, check out the social media uh, pages of the companies and their competitors uh, before an interview. I think that would be something good to um, uh, to see and see, you know, if it's uh, if you can learn something more about the company that way, um, uh, it might be something uh, that you can kind of refer to in your interview. Yeah, I think we have quite a few entrepreneurs here that use Facebook um, for their businesses because uh, I'm mm -hmm. seeing that again and again and again in here. Facebook and Instagram seem to be uh, popular. Um, some are using Twitter for their business. Um, but the, the two that really jump out here and what I'm seeing are Facebook and uh, Instagram and WhatsApp. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, uh, so very um, kind of very universal in our um, uh, in our audience today in terms of uh, how they're using it. So it's it's um, so you guys hit it right on the head. I'm very happy to you know hear your feedback. It was a very interactive discussion. I hope you learned um, something, but more importantly, like uh, you know, this is a, this is here to stay. So it's a matter of let's use this as a lesson to see how companies work, how they operate, how how the good ones became good, how the bad ones became bad, right? Like, and those are lessons that I think can um, be applied to a lot of other industries. So don't think of it as oh well, Facebook is successful because they're Facebook. No, Facebook is successful because they they learned how to be good they learned how to be the top of their industry and that those are lessons that can be applied uh to kind of if you're a restaurant if you're a spa if you, any any business that we've you know uh that we've kind of uh brought up today so so it's facebook was good because they really thought through things right and twitter my guess is they didn't manage it the same way facebook did just a, a, a final thought. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on the future of Twitter? I mean, I'm not putting you on the spot here, but well, I guess I am. But um, you know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I um, when I when I first heard that they were going to be sold, I thought, okay, good, that makes sense because there's no way that they're they could that they're big enough to be an independent company. I figured they would have been sold by now. The fact that they still haven't been sold means that I think that there's something much deeper going on of like, what are you really buying? So now, what are you really buying? Are you really buying that technology? Okay, fine, you buy the technology, but as you all just said, well, why do I need to buy something when I could ha use uh, Facebook for free? Or even if I were a company, I fine, I'll pay Facebook for advertising, but why do I need the technology of Twitter? So that's the thing. I don't understand what Twitter has to um, are they buying, you know, a big an amazing technology team? Are they what are the, so what is it that uh, that somebody would be buying? And that's what I have a hard time understanding, which is probably um, you know, why uh, they haven't been sold yet. Mm -hmm. So they may just close, right? In terms of it depends on how much money they um, they make they they've they've announced like layoffs here and there. So I you know uh, uh, for they may be around for as long as they can pay their bills, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. Oh wait a minute here. Uh, do you uh, think there are uh, new social media companies coming soon with new technology or? Has every aspect of the technology been covered? I mean, are you seeing any <laughs> small ones that are? No, you know, not yet. I, I've seen some niche ones, um, but even th they have. They are probably sold to somebody with somebody bigger. I, um, uh, uh, I don't. You know, I think it's really hard to start something new at this point because. Uh, Number one, Facebook can in include start that functionality and and put you out of business pretty fast. So, uh, but at the same time, there could be something very technology driven and engineering driven. That I'm not an engineer. That maybe there's like like WhatsApp. 
it was a, it was what uh, not even six people started that. It was a very small company that they found this tech, that they developed this really unique technology. Well, maybe you know I could see some technologists starting something that would be compelling, um, uh, but I, I can't imagine what that would be. I think we're probably kind of in the um, we have too many options already for social media. So it sounds like you're you're saying that we're kind of getting to market maturity, where you know we've yes. had all these startup startups, and now yeah. you're you're going to see consolidations. Um, that's right, the road. and I think that's exactly right in terms of we've already seen that, and and then I think that's why it's hard for Twitter to survive on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up then. Uh, we've uh, we've. Going past our allotted time a little bit here, um, but uh, I'd like to thank Debbie um, for uh, spending some time tonight to, uh, talking to us, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody um, who uh, participated in the discussion. This is a great discussion, and you know it's something that uh, everybody or, or most everybody uses, so in, in some form or another. So uh, I think we had some great participation tonight. Um, I agree. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Uh, so basically within 24 hours, everyone's going to get an email uh, from us, uh, basically with a link to a short survey. Uh, it's only like two or three questions. Uh, and I just uh, you know, want to get some feedback from you on what you thought of the discussion. If you have any ideas for other discussions, I know this idea uh, was something that was suggested by uh, students previously, so um, thank you for that. And uh, so you get that, and we'll also be posting the webinar uh, on our com student community in the business section of the academic uh, uh, section of the uh, uh, community. Um, should be there probably by Friday, so if you miss something, um, you can certainly go back in and listen to the uh, recording. So thank you for every uh, for everyone participating, and I hope everybody has a great night. Thank you, Debbie, and uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>